The next technological revolution will literally reshape the way we live, our world, and our cities. And actually, if you think about it, every single technological revolution has literally been seen as magic for the generations that preceded it. And let's do something. Imagine being a caveman to just discover fire. And I have a torch in my hand. It burns and it gives light. It's an indescribable phenomenon that can only be understood as wizardry. And if we think about it, just a step afterwards, that man starts creating squares and natural ones in the field. We are transforming the world to create agriculture. Moments afterwards, abundancy is a trend. The population starts growing, and even writing is being created. Civilization starts. And after expansions and wars, even the Industrial Revolution takes place. We conquer the world itself. We start speaking different languages and with different cultures. And little by little, even aviation is being created. We are able to travel something that was only feasible in our dreams. And even with the communications revolution, we are able to, sp able to speak with people around thousands of kilometers. And after all, we are actually even entering the digital revolution. Even skyscrapers, right now, they have screens on them. And if you think about it, even right now in the palm of our hands, we have something that is able to connect us with the knowledge of all the human era. But after all, we are not different from that man that just discovered fire. All of these things are literally magic that just were created, and now they're real. Well, think about the next technological revolution. What are we going to see in the coming future? Well, it's going to surprise us more than even those that precede us. And actually, it's going to be the biotech one. So get ready for it. And just think about it. Think about what it would be and how it lo would look like. Well, what if I tell you that these panels are actually able to generate energy from the very same ground, electricity, by using natural microorganisms, without damaging nor altering the natural ecosystem. What if I tell you that this square that you see, this structure, is actually able, with those same microorganisms, to generate even water from the soil itself, from the earth? You're able to walk through it, have shadow, have a fresher air, but also even water and electricity that is powering lights above you. But not only that, imagine going inside a park like this one. We don't only have those technologies, but actually the memory of humanity is stored within it, within nature. Imagine going there, touching a plant, a leaf, and only with the human touch, activating the memory of humanity itself, hearing messages from people that wanted to live a footprint for present and future generations. Well, that is something that is not just science fiction or something that perhaps we could be creating. It's something that is already happening. We've already installed things, and I'm going to show you which ones they are. And this is a revolution that is just getting started. And these are just a few examples. Imagine how this whole thing will look like in the coming years. And the question right now is, how did it all start? Well, actually, since I was really little, I, I actually wanted to do a lot of very different things, a lot of projects. I've been involved in projects uh, with NASA or uh, with different investigation centers. I created a few companies, one of software, one of hardware. But still, I wanted to create something really different, something that could really mean uh, a change or a step forward in the human, let's say, trip. And after all, the thing is that I actually had a dream, literally. It was the most stereotypical story ever. I woke up at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night. But the dream actually is really cool, by the way, so I'm going to tell you. So I woke up like in a road on a hill. It was a village, a very cool one. The sky was not the sky of the earth, and still I was actually able to breathe and walk through it. 
So I, I was walking, I was seeing the architecture, the architecture was totally different. And it was a small village surrounded by mountains in the middle. They had like agricultural fields. And I was walking through the hill, I was seeing the people walking there with dresses that are really, really cool. I haven't seen those dresses before. And then when I went um, to the end of the village and I, uh, I went to the agricultural fields, I saw one of those entities that lived there and he showed me a piece of the field. He took it uh, off and I was just seeing some wires below the, the green area. And I, and I understood that they were actually generating energy out of nature itself. So I woke up suddenly. I was in shock. And I actually wanted to do something like that because that was so cool that it had to be done. So basically, that's when it all started. I, I actually created a team from scratch to, to create something like this. It, this was in 2014. And, and actually, after all of that, uh, I realized that even biological batteries were invented in uh, the 70s. They've been there for 50 years so far. Even right now, if you go to wastewater treatment systems, you will see biological batteries. They use microorganisms to break down organic matter and set electrons free. Then they capture those electrons. The thing is that if you take one of those biological batteries and you place it outside, it would stop working in a few days. It would get contaminated by the microorganisms from the exterior, which is the most natural thing that for years people have been fighting that kind of contamination from external microorganisms so that batteries could prevail for longer. And our approach was totally different. Why not creating a biological battery, sort of say, that is literally like uh, a panel um, that is actually able not to fight that kind of enemy, but to join forces with it. So we literally create it in the second layer that you see here. I mean, you see one layer of soil and below another layer. We created it like the perfect hotel for the most ideal microorganisms. They were able to go inside, grow in numbers, so that we only use natural ones. They eat organic matter and they set electrons free. We then captured those electrons with sponges, with carbon sponges, like the ones that you see there. They don't oxidize, they don't get reduced. So it's actually something that is able to avoid maintenance and prevail for decades, actually. And the cool thing is that when they eat organic matter, they don't only set electrons free, they also set hydrogen ions free that combine with the oxygen from the outside and create water at the same time. And this is actually something really cool because it's a system that is able to irrigate itself from below. It's able to even reduce heat when it's warm. It's able to increase it when it's cold. It tends to 21 degrees. And it's actually able to make from green areas something efficient in economical terms. And these are the kinds of things that we are doing right now to activate light points out of the ground itself. But with the company that I created, the goal was not just to create one technology. Right now, we are even working in very cool technologies like creating bioluminescent plants, for example, or using plants in many, many other ways that I'll explain in a second. And all of these technologies, by the way, they were actually created in different centers that, that we built. One of them is actually in, in Ibiza itself. It's here. And the cool thing is that I joined forces, so to say, with another visionary who's called Eduardo Mayol. Um, and we had the dream of, of actually creating something that could be a place not just to do science, but to recover ecosystems. When I speak about the biotech revolution, specifically in our cities, it's about cities that are able to recover the nature that we left behind, not just to prevent the world from getting worse, but to do something better. And here, we're replicating different ecosystems, like desert, dunar, salines, forests, Mediterranean ecosystems. And it's really cool because we don't just play science, we are recovering environments. We are recovering species that are in danger, and some that, even believe, that were even believed extinct. So <laughs> it's, it's another kind of vision. It's another kind of approach to science. And by the way, this can be visited because we wanted everyone to see that kind of world that we are creating. We are even creating, for example, music out of plants. 
you know, there are ways to actually enjoy this. So uh, one of the technologies that we created is actually based on one of the abilities um, that, that plants have, which is to modulate frequencies. You can use a plant, modulate a frequency with it uh, from its environment, and the plant will tell you if the plant needs water, if it has a disease, if it has a fungi. Right now, we are doing even a dictionary of the waves of plants to speak with them, sort of say. But there's a wave that we use to actually perceive the human touch. This thing that you're seeing right now is actually a piano, or a mixing board, actually, where you can play music just with the human touch. And actually, by the way, here I have another example, which is a pot. If you touch it with something that is not human, it doesn't get activated. But if you touch it with your hand, it does. And it's really, really cool because we are not even touching the plant here. We are touching the substrate, the, the, the soil, because it's a conductive body. The plant is another conductive body. And that frequency actually goes through the whole system. This one is not generating energy, by the way. This one is plugged to the grid. <laughs> here we're just exposing one of the technologies. But if you want to see the other ones, they are already installed across the world. And here we have some examples. One of the coolest projects in, with we, uh, in which we've been involved is actually the Eden project in Cornwall. Uh, they have like domes and forests inside, and we were actually using these technologies to transform uh, the whole project itself, to activate lights with the touch of plants and many other things. We are actually working in, in very different scenarios. I mean, it could be a hotel, a hospital, a shop, a park, a part of a city, any, anything actually. By combining every single technology from this biotech revolution, we're actually able to create worlds within worlds, so to say. And even in residential buildings, this is a project in which we're involved right now. And, and actually, the cool thing in here is that we are able not just to create one building that is able to sort of uh, revive nature, but affect the whole neighborhood around it. What if we were actually able to create something that could create an impact, not just in a part of the city, but little by little in the rest of the city, like a lung that is able to breathe? And one of the coolest projects as well, and this one is, is one that we are doing with uh, our partners that are called ONA, um, in Barcelona is actually the first biotech port in the world. It's literally a port where the energy to power the light points is obtained from the very same uh, nature. And sometimes a lot of people say, hey, but what, how would it be to, to actually walk through the biotech city? Well, imagine waking up, opening your eyes, and touching nature as the first thing that you do in the morning, and that being the first thing that lights up your day. What about waking up from your bed, going to the living room, and seeing that from the ceiling, Hanging plants are falling, and they are generating electricity, they are lowering the heat when it's warm, and they are cleaning the air itself. You open your windows, and you see that your own city is a biotech city. You go down, and you see your own gardens, and your own parts in, in your city, and you realize that the energy that is powering the light points there is actually generated from the ground. You start seeing people even creating art out of nature itself like how you saw before with the music. And finally, there's a part in the city that is like the climax of the biotech city. And the same way we have theaters or museums in a, in a city, there's a monument that we are starting to create, which is called the Living Library. And it's actually the first evolutionary monument in the world to store the memory of humanity in nature itself. So the same way we are able to activate uh, lights or sounds or voice messages just by touching a plant, why not storing it in nature itself, in different structures, in different cities, creating a global network that is able to interconnect us all in a way we haven't seen before, to create a global brain, sort of say, out of humanity. And in the end, we are the ones that have the choice. We have the choice of creating like the most pristine artificial cities 
in the world. We have the choice of creating the most efficient and productive cities, or just to place patches to avoid the world from getting worse. Or there's now another solution. There's now another way. Why not creating something that could actually create a symbiosis with nature itself to use life in another level? And that road, it's basically the biotech city. The question is, do you want to be part of it? Thank you very much. <laughs>